like many other things, uh, one of the oldest or, or the oldest document uh, about the bees and beeswax and, and honey, bees honey, uh, is uh, dated back to 18th century BC on a stone relief. Uh, th there is a uh, king or a governor. Uh, he is supposed to be the governor of two cities, Mari and Suhi. His name is Shamash Res Usur in eighth, later 8th century. He explained how he brought honey, the honeybees, from the mountains and produced honey and beeswax. He explained how he separated wax by melting. Of course, uh, the, the king's emperor or presidents or vice presidents, they always try to leave a document to show what important things they uh, made in the country. So this is a kind of a uh, propaganda of, of the king, but of course it's a re for us it's important because it's, it's a reality, because it's the first time that we see that people talk about bees, honey, and beeswax. Uh, this uh, carving uh, or relief uh, on the mountain uh, shows uh, uh, uh, Res Usur, uh, the governor, uh, talking to two gods, you see. Now, they always try to tell reliefs like this, that they are talking to God, so the people will be afraid of them. They said, if I do something wrong, he will tell the gods and God will punish me. So when he says something, they say, and usually the kings say, these are the orders of the God. They told me, I, I mentioned it before. So as you can see, always the God is depicted taller than the king. And in many cases, the gods sit on a, on a chair. But here we have two gods, therefore uh, they are standing up. So somehow he's chatting with the gods. So he's so important that the gods care to talk to him. <coughs> Most of the kings in, in, in ancient times did that. Now he says in, in his clay tablet on, the, on, on, a, uh, on a relief which is carved on a rock, he says, I am Shamash Resh Usur, governor of Suhu and Mari. I brought down from the mountain of Habha bees that collect honey, which none of my ancestors had ever that he's, he's trying to say that none of my fathers, grandmothers, or, or any, any king in this country was successful enough to discover the, the existence of bees or honey. So I am the first one who brought the, the, the, the, the bees to the country. Uh, bees co that collect honey, which none of my ancest ancestors had ever brought into Suhu, and made them settle in orchards of uh, gabari built, orchards, Beyvelik, uh, gabari built it town. They collect honey wax, which I know how to melt. So he thinks that the bees collect honey and, and wax from somewhere, but actually it's from the fl fl flowers, but of course they are not in the form of bees or, or honey. They, they convert the juice that they suck from the flowers into wax and, and, and, and, and honey. Well, anyway, I know how to melt. The gardeners know too. So he says, I know how to melt the mixture of uh, wax and honey to separate each from the other. My gardeners know also, he also taught to his gardeners how to produce honey and wax for various purposes. Of course, honey for food and wax for technological purposes. Whoever comes in the future, may he ask the old man, who will say, they are the building of Governor Shamash Resur, who introduced honeybees into the land of Suhu. He wants uh, the people, old people in future, not to forget that he was the one who brought bees, bees, bees, wax, and, and honey into that country. So he wants to make sure that the people tell in the future that he was the uh, first person who brought it. 
Yani böbürlenmek yetmiyor. Bir de diyor ki benden sonra bunu anlatın kardeşim. Bilsin herkes diyor. Ya ben yaptım bu işi diyor. Okay. Now, uh, when we look at the how to separate bees, does anyone know how do we sep- how we separate honey and and and be- bees wax from each other accurately so that we don't waste any wax any honey? Any idea or have you seen anything? Any any idea, any suggestion? Bal peteğinde bal var, ayıracağız, yes? Yani eğer şey olacaksa, kimyasal bir yol düşüneceksen... Dersin. Kimyasal tehlikeli tabii. Peki ne yapardın kimyasal olsa? Vaksin bir şekilde çözmeye çalışırdım. Ama solvent o karışmayacağını garanti edemez ki bala. Any other suggestion? It's simple suggestion, yes. Çok basit olarak işte bal peteğin altında Süzerek, hani işte Nasıl süreceğiz? Ee, biraz geniş bir süzgecimiz varsa... Ama öyle bir şarşarak mı ki kolay kolay? Yani çoğu içeride kalabilir. Üstüne Damlar da. Yani press gibi bir şey kullanıp ağırlıklar falan. Yeah, you can use press but what happens? You, you, you ruin the structure of uh, these wax. So if you want to protect... But of course in those days they didn't care to protect. To, in modern times, they try to protect uh, wax in original shape. So we use other tech. Okay, but, but in the old days, just like you said, they, somehow they separated it. But let's let's go on and see how he did it. Now, what we think that he did was probably that he should add some water to crush. Beeswax, he, he, so he, he probably he crushed it just like you mentioned and then added some water. So what happens? Water, of course, first he filters, just like you said, he tries to uh, hang it up and maybe the, some of the, uh, the, the, the honey will drip, but some will stay there. Therefore, in order to separate the wax, because wax was as important as honey, actually it was even more important because it was a technological material. Wax is used in technology, so they didn't care to waste some of the honey because when you add water, honey dissolves in water. So if you heat it up, you extract almost all the honey into water face. Then when you cool it down, the wax will start to swim at the top, but you lost maybe 20%, 25% of the honey. But it didn't, they didn't, this was the only method they knew. At least this man uh, discovered this method. Sudaki çözünen alamıyorsun zaten. Evet. Hani kaynatıp da ayıralım öyle şeyler bildikleri yok. Ha. Atıyorlar gidiyor. Belki de şerbet diye içiyorlar onu bilmiyoruz tabi. So he, he should, we expect that he added some water and after he crushed and uh, then he had to heat it as I mentioned until beeswax is melted. Then he should let the mixture cool down for 10-12 hours. Pure wax, bees wax would be swimming on the, at the top. And uh, it, it would be now free of honey. So they, they obtain, he obtained pure uh, wax by isolation. But there is another method that without adding water, you can also heat the mixture of uh, wax and, and honey and probably uh, what uh, he did was to, to melt it and uh, if w- when you melt the mixture and wait for a time the, the wax again w- will be at the top and the honey will be in the bottom so you can collect the wax and the honey you, so you don't waste as much as uh, you, you lost in the previous case. So you have a chance to produce all the wax and most of the honey. This is this technique is still used in, in some countries today. They melt it and then they separate them. So after removing the solidified beeswax, he must have observed the honey at the top. And then, as I mentioned, in some countries they, they still do the, they still follow this procedure. So 
as I mentioned before, the reason we, we would prefer to crush it because we would like to keep the honeycombs, petek, yani, uh, so we can reuse it many times. Now, somebody tried to solve this problem uh, and, and tried to find a way uh, to, to uh, uh, separate the honey and protect the honeycombs. Can you suggest, uh, what was it? Yeah. Uh, did I, when was it? Yeah, 1838. What kind of machine he designed, do you think that you, you could separate it? A machine, very simple machine. So he extracted, which rotates like the uh, dryers of the washing machine. So all the honey is pushed out from the honeycombs and then it just drips down to the bottom of the container. So you remove the uh, honeycombs uh, unharmed. So we'll, let's see, very simple, very simple equipment. Yeah, you can see in the beginning, this was uh, the instrument that he uh, designed. So when it rotates, uh, the honeycomb is here. So uh, the honey is separated from, from the uh, uh, honeycomb or beeswax, and later he designed this one, which was much more efficient. So you, you put the honeycombs here, when you rotate it, you collect it, this is more efficient, and this became uh, modernized, and in, in modern factories, they use something similar to that. So this is a modern one. You can see there are many honeycombs. Bakın tahta kasasından bile içinden çıkarmıyorlar. Çünkü tahta kasayla korumak işlerine geliyor. De değişik neden. Üst üste koyduğun zaman da zarar görmüyor. Çevirerek tabii dışa doğru aynı santrifüj kuvvetiyle dışa gidiyor. So you can easily force the uh, honey uh, to separate from the honeycomb as you, as you rotate it by centrifugal forces. It will just hit the walls and then drip to the bottom or flow to the bottom of the, uh, the centrifuge machine. So you easily collect your uh, honey without harming the honeycombs. Now, normally in nature, the bees make the honeycomb and the honey. But now in modern factories, we use uh, Factory, uh, factory made honeycombs. Of course, these honeycombs are not made by, by the bees, but by, by, by, by, uh, by people in factories. Why do you think that we decided not to let bees to produce the uh, honeycomb, beeswax, but we decided to produce ourselves? What was the advantage? Yeah, time and energy and material. So when you just place the uh, handmade uh, or factory made honeycombs into the uh, uh, box of the, where the uh, bees call, uh, live, then you save energy and time and material for the bees. So it becomes more efficient. Therefore, you do not want to waste it. But of course, you, you produce this, these uh, honeycombs also from uh, some scrap beeswax. <coughs> now, as I mentioned before, beeswax uh, wax was very valuable, even more valuable than uh, uh, the, the, the honey. Uh, it was used instead of some plastics that we use, wherever we use some plastics, beeswax was doing the same, same, same job. Not, not all kinds, but at least some of the, the, the jobs that we do today with plastics, uh, they were doing it with the uh, uh, be beeswax. Uh, they used beeswax as a mold for metal casting. Uh, this technique is, is, is still used, wax lost uh, casting method. Wax loss casting method. Balmumu kay, kay, balmumu kayıplı 
metal dökümü. Did you ever hear this? Lost wax casting metal. Do you know anything about uh, the use of beeswax for casting metals, especially the jewelers? They use it for your rings, for your necklaces, for your bracelets. They, they, they, they use uh, uh, silver or gold uh, jewelry. Uh, they make it, uh, they still use the Sumerian technology today. Any suggestion how they do it? Why they need beeswax to produce a ring? Daha önemlisi, ondan daha önemli. Yağlıyoruz, yağlayınca da çıkıyor. Just think, just look at the name. Lost wax casting, lost wax. Bal mumu kayıplı metal döküm tekniği, bal mumu kaybı. Bal mumunu yok ediyorsun döküm sırasında. Biraz fikir vermiyor mu? Any idea? Akrabası kuyumcu olan yok galiba. Olsa da kuyumcular hepsi burada İstanbul'da genelde dökümler yapılıyor. Okay. Let's see how they do it. Now the sculpts, heykel tıraşlar, they use beeswax to make small statues. Of course for the big ones they don't use beeswax. They, what do they use? The be, if you are going to make a big three meter long, four meter long statue, how do you make it? It's, it's bronze casting. How do, you, how do they do it? Have you ever seen a sculpt? Working, be, making a sculpt. Yeah. It's usually casting, but before that you have to make a mold. How are you going to make the mold? Hmm? Oh, ayrı bir teknik. O başka bir şey. Plastikle kaplayıp yüzünü kopyasını o başka. <gülüyor> Eskiden insan için yaptıklarını sanmıyorum. Just try to propose a technique, an idea. <coughs> you have the wax. Jewelers usually small, but just think of, I said, if you want to make small statues, gold or silver, you use wax. But for big statues, three meter, four meter long, you don't use wax. You use something else. Very simple material, very cheap. Almost for free. Clay. <coughs> hmm? clay. clay, yeah. All the sculpts use clay to make the first model. But of course, if you are going to make three meters long statue, if you make it out of clay, it will collapse immediately. If you were a sculpt, what would you do to produce a sculpt of Atatürk, let's say five meter high? You cannot make mold because after you go up, to maybe one and a half meters or two meters, it'll just collapse. You cannot carry the, the, the weight, the mass. Hmm? Maybe build Still problematic. Very simple. You observe it everywhere on Earth. Everywhere on Earth. The nature solved this problem. That's how we learned it from the nature. Hmm? So if you have something soft, you cannot make a big stuff out of that because it'll just smash down. So the nature solved that problem. You see it everywhere. Everywhere you look, you see it. Even today in this room, you see it. How God or the nature did that, solved that problem. Very simple. No, no, no. Not the material, but the physical operation. First you make something and then use the clay. Hmm? No, no, not drying. <coughs> you, you see it in this room by looking at us, by looking at me, looking at her, looking at him. Nature solved that problem. Come on. Skeleton. You have to make a skeleton out of iron and some wires, some textile maybe, even newspapers, whatever. Then you cover it with a thin layer of clay. 
then it stands for a long time. Okay? Skeleton. That's why when you make a small statue, you can use beeswax, because if you make it this big, it doesn't crash. And it is easier to work with, if you have, you have to work the details, you cannot work with clay in very details, but in, when you have wax, you can make very fine details on the ring or on the necklace. Sometimes you can even use mold, press it. So even when you uh, have your uh, uh, teeth uh, uh, operated in, in, in a dentist, they also use blue wax girdles, which might be girl. Yeah? So they take the mold, the shape of your teeth in the cavity with the blue one, and then they send it to, they send it to uh, uh, a place where they uh, produce gold uh, filling for your uh, cavity. So an altın kapla, altınla doldu değil mi oraya? Altın kapla, altın mı soktu? Yok, hatırlamıyorum. Sadece o şekli aldıklarını aldı. Belki de bakmadın. Altın, bir gram altın istedi mi senden? Yok. Altınla onu döktürüp sonra koyuyor. Faturadan kesmiştir. Okay. So. <coughs> They made a small statue from beeswax. Then they covered the statue with wet clay, see? But th this, this technique is still being used, as I said, by jewelers. And then let it dry. Then they placed a small stick to the bottom of the statue so that you could pour in the, uh, the gold in the hole. Let's suppose this is the statue you made. You make it out of uh, wax, and then you cover it with clay. OK, so you make a small hole in here in the clay. You let the clay dry. Then what? You have to find a way to uh, obtain gold copy of this, this statue, small statue. You coat it with clay. Why? What, what are you going to do next? Any suggestion? So they invented this. Three, five thousand years ago. You, you should come up with a solution much faster. Very easy. There is a property of clay. We do not use clay only to make bricks to make houses in primitive villages, but we use clay for technological objects. In this room, I can see it, the product. What do you do with the clay? No, no, no, no, clay. You, you produce a material out of clay. Everywhere. Huh? You, you can use the cement, but that's not the case. They, they, they pure, in, in cement, you use, you, you use small amount of clay, but uh, you use pure clay. Not, you do not do anything else. Mix with it water, obtain the clay, and mold it, and then you produce something in, in factories and use everywhere, in houses, in building houses. Hmm? Porcelain is something else, yeah. It, it's not the natu normal clay, it's, it's a special kind of clay. Kaolin, kaolin. But it's similar technology. You use just regular clay, chamur yani. All constructions, what else do you use? Rather than ceramics and porcelain, we, what, what else do you use? In houses, in buildings, everywhere, in the world. Instead of rock, you use this. What is it? Beton. Beton dedi. Betona katılıyor. Başka bir şey yok ki dünyada ya. Kaç tane şey var? Çimentoyu geçtik. Bina yapacağız. Kum. He? Kum. Kum. Kum. Squarts. Tuğla. He? Tuğla. Tuğla, yeah. Bricks. Bricks. Ceramic. Okay. Ceramic, you use clay. But porcelain, you use kaolin. It's white one. So when you fire it, you produce ceramic, okay? 
So, first you dry it, and you have a hole here, right, reaching to the leg. Then what do you have to do to make sure that uh, you can pour in gold? You have to, after drying, you carry out something, just like producing ceramic. What do they do when they produce ceramic? You make it out of, out of uh, clay, you dry it, and then put it, into, put it into oven. You bake it. Then clay is converted into ceramic or, or brick. So you do the same. You put it into the oven, heat it up. After drying, of course, if you don't dry, it'll crack. So if you dry real, you make sure that there is no moisture is left, then you put it into the oven. What, what else happens? When this turns into, when this turns into uh, ceramic, what happens to the wax in there? Melts. And lost. Yeah, melts and then burns. It's lost. That's why it's called lost wax casting. Now you have a ceramic mold inside, empty. Then you melt the gold or silver, just pour it in, and that's it. And then you crack, you break apart the uh, ceramic. You have a nice, clean statue made out of gold or, or, or silver, of course, then you polish it. This method is, is still used after 5,000 years. Uh, the, the, well, not, I shouldn't say 5,000, but later, of course, after they obtained, let's say, at least uh, 2,400 years or something. Still we use it. We, we couldn't change the technology because it's so efficient, so easy to make. We didn't change the technology. Of course, there are some alternatives, but still all the jewelers use that, yeah. Doesn't wax just melt away or evaporate? Both, yeah. Or in some techniques, some statue makers, uh, what they do, they put in the oven uh, low temperature, they melt it and collect it, wax, if they don't want to waste it, and then they, they fire it, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in the name it has lost in it. Yeah, lost means it disappeared. Yeah, disappeared. But it doesn't have to be. Yes, yeah. just as he said. Yeah. They, they don't want to waste a very valuable material. But of course, if you want to make many copies of that statue, you have to use another technique because you can only make one copy with this technique. But for jewelry, it's okay. Now, the jewelers today do not use clay or ceramic. They use a simpler and much cheaper, uh, easy to make material. Can you suggest what, do, what you, should you cover uh, the surface of the wax statue and then you can pour in gold, another material? No, no, no, not tin. Tin, you have to melt it. It, it, it melts the, no, it's not tin. Out, outside, instead of clay, they use a cheaper material, alchi. Plaster, plaster of Paris. It's much cheaper. Much easier, because you don't have to go up to very high temperatures. All you need is to let this, let the plaster of Paris set, and then you put it in the oven, let's say 100 degree or something, you collect the wax, and then you can easily pour in the uh, uh, gold. But of course, you have to make sure that there are no air bubbles left in, this, in, the, in the ceramic, also in the, in, in the plaster of Paris mold. Because if you have small bubbles, when you put it into the oven, or when you pour in the gold, molten gold, more than 1,000 degrees, it cracks. If you have air bubbles, it cracks. So you have to remove, evacuate, and remove the air bubbles. In modern times, that's what they do. But in the old days, they didn't have a vacuum uh, pump. So in many cases, probably the ceramics cracked. But you remove the air bubbles by, uh, by mixing the mold many, many times. You make sure that even, does anyone know how to make uh, ceramic? Anybody works in the ceramic? Oh, the ceramic is, uh, lab is closed. Warm ceramic, there's a lot. Yep, anybody taking ceramic course? Yeah, they will teach you how to get rid of the uh, air bubbles uh, by, uh, by spending some time by forcing it with your hands. To make sure that you remove all the air bubbles because it's, it, it, in order to prevent the cracking in the oven, you have to do that. 
אוקיי. So when they remove the small stick, as I showed here, you have a small canal, small hole reaching to the uh, uh, wax. And then they dry the clay and then fire it. So beeswax is melted and burned, and then a smoke comes out. Then uh, you can pour the molten gold inside or silver or bronze. So, as I mentioned before, after that they break the uh, ceramic because there is no other way to reach to the gold statue. And as I mentioned, they still use it today, this technique. Now there is a video and see how they make your... Has anyone seen this video, this video how they make the rings and necklaces in jewelers? Okay. Ses duyulabiliyor mu? Biraz açık ama. Ne kadar zayıf ya. <gülüyor> Maalesef. Bunların her birisi balmumundan yaptığı şeyler, objeler, yüzükler, şeyler, küpeler. Her bir mavi balmum işte mavi onların şu anda kullandığı başka bir çeşit şey, wax. Dişçilerin kullandığı aynısı. He will use plaster instead of instead of so he sprays in oil to make sure that the ceramic doesn't stick to the uh, wax. So he's going to prepare uh, plaster of Paris, mixing with water and then with the mixture. He will uh, make a uh, mixture of uh, uh, plaster ready, ready for um, pouring into the, into the mold. Plaster of Paris, ilk herhalde Paris'ten mi çıktı neyse, Alçı, Alçı'nın ismi Plaster of Paris. <gülüyor> Hayret ne kadar sesi azmış ya. Ben bile zor duyuyorum. Now after that you will see how he evacuates the Plaster of Paris to remove air. This is a, uh, this is a device that he uses. It, it, it, it, it applies vacuum. Desikatör gibi. Yani böyle küresel yapmasın neden patlamasın diye. It also vibrates and vacuums. So you make sure that uh, all the air bubble is gone. <laughs> He helps the machine. Just three minutes after he removes it. <coughs> now he'll pour it onto the uh, wax model. So wax model will be covered with plaster of Paris after about half an hour or so, or maybe an hour. It will be uh, set. It will be set. Üstüne bant koymuş ki dışarı taşmasın diye. Onu da videoda söylüyor. İzo, şey, elektrik bantı koyuyor ki sağa sola sıçramasın biraz. 
aynı anda birkaç taneyi birden koyuyor. Yani deminki gibi bir sürü var elinde. At once he will produce maybe 10 or 20 uh, rings or necklaces. So he prepared them earlier. Now he evacuates also. Because when he poured them, some air is trapped in. <coughs> Before it sets, he removes air again. For about 15, 10, 15 minutes. Now he's melting the gold, and after he pours the gold into the mold, after the, the, the, the, uh, the wax removed from the uh, plaster of Paris uh, mold, he will pour the gold. But of course, before he has to, uh, he has to uh, melt the gold, he'll pour it, but then he'll centrifuge again so that uh, the gold distributes equally in the mold. He's using silver this time, not gold. You see this boric acid. They use borax when they melt the metal, so to reduce the melting point. <coughs> and also it prevents the uh, formation of oxides. Sumerians use also. So it was a discovery of Sumerians to use uh, borax when they melted the metal. Bak hala kıpkırmızı. Al gümüş. Soğuk suya koyup parçalayacak. Very similar to Sumerian, 3,000 some hundred years ago, they followed it almost. But they, of course, they didn't have vacuum, they didn't have any centrifuge. As I mentioned, some of them were uh, destroyed, but they didn't care. They repeated the procedure several times if they cracked. <laughs> Çünkü ülkeler arasında çok savaş vardı. They were fighting with each other. All the city kingdoms were fighting. If you remember, I, I talked about Hammurabi. Okay, Hammurabi. He didn't just sit quietly. He wanted. He he he talked to the other people, and then he attacked other kings all the time. Babil Kral. You see the ring here. One ring, and we'll see what happens to that ring afterwards. He'll he'll send it, and then and then. Uh, he'll polish it. What's shaking the collie again, boy? When you look at the gold jewelry left from Sumerians. They are as they are casted as accurately as this one. Beautiful jewelry. I think I showed you the golden necklaces and the hairdress of of uh, the queen, right? Gösterdin değil mi kraliçe Naputi? See, now it's polished.
So as she said, Sumerians were really smart people. They invented lots of things. <coughs> now, we can be sure that they used beeswax for casting. And there is a clay tablet that says, from the first millennium BC, it says 20 minas of beeswax First millennium BC, around maybe 900 BC or something, 20 minas of bigs wax is given to Simit, Usta, metal documents, to manufacture something. Of course, it's cracked, so we don't, we don't, we don't, we cannot see what's written here is cracked, but we understand that definitely he is a Simit, means Usta, gold Simit, silver Simit. So also used to protect the copper from tarnishing. They they melted and then coated the surface of copper uh, metal. Uh, usually on the roofs they use uh, it to protect it, and they also used it to, to polish the polish the wood, door or, or uh, windows. Yeah, this clay tablet talks about the uh, or speaks about the uh, roof coating with beeswax. The tablet says for the roof of the shrine of God Nabu. I had cedars stretched across the deep above those cedars. I put bright copper on copper. I place wax. So beeswax is gablal in Sumerian language. So hangisini? Evet, tapınak. Gadnabunun tapınağı. Sunak da olabilir tabi ama tapınak yani. Zaten tapınağa sunum yapıyorsun. Kurban. Çünkü tanrılar bizim gibi yiyorlar, içiyorlar, şarap içiyorlar. Her şey her şeyi onlara veriyorlar. Sanki aç kalacaklar gibi. işte hayali tanrılara tabi kurban kesiyorlar. Tanrıları mutlu etmek için. İnsan gibi düşünüyorlar. Yani her davranışları insan gibi. Kızıyorlar, kavga ediyorlar. Yunan tanrıları kavga eder. Yere iner, kızlara tecavüz eder. Birbiriyle tecavüz eder. İlli gül çocuk olur. Aynı aile toplum gibi yani kendi toplumlarını tanrılar da yapıyor ama onlar işte üstün. E bizim üstümüzde bir tük güçleri var. Bize her şeyi yapabilirler. Başka türlü bir hayal yok yani. Çünkü insan görüyorlar. O da böyledir diye düşünüyorlar tanrı. Yiyecek, içecek, yatacak. İşte saldıracak, kavga edecek. Sevecek, aşık olacak. Ne isterse yapacak. Aynı insan gibi. O yüzden sunum yapıyorlar. Kurban veriyorlar. <gülüyor> They were just treated, the gods were expected to behave just like human beings. But they had much more power than normal human beings. They didn't die. Now, in, in Anatolia, uh, we, we, we found a, um, a wax writing uh, tablet. We know that when the uh, uh, Sumerians invented uh, clay tablets and writing and clay tablets, uh, towards the end, uh, Hittites and some of the uh, civilizations in, in, in Mesopotamia started to use wax writing tablets. Uh, wax writing tablet was very important invention because when you had a clay tablet, you had to form the clay tablet in, in the shape in, in about size of your hand and then you had to write on it, let it dry and then bake it. In many cases, if a king sent a clay tablet to another king, usually they coated the fired ceramic uh, clay tablet with another layer of clay, which is envelope, and then they wrote down to whom it would go. And the king would make sure that no one can read the letter he wrote to the other king because it's sealed in the, in the, in the envelope. So there are some examples of enveloped clay tablets in, in, in Anatolian Museum. <coughs> so, of course, it takes a long time. And in many cases, the clay tablet cracks. So they used wax writing tablets. 
So wax was a very important material, as I said, and it made it very easy for the people to communicate with uh, wax coated uh, writing tablet or wax writing tablets. And the, I, for, I think I forgot to write the notes, but the, the, the wax uh, writing tablets were used for thousands of years. In Europe, it was used, I think the last time they used it was 1842, but 1842 AD, about let's say less than 200 years ago. They used it in Netherlands because they were counting the, the, the, the, the, the, the, the uh, ships in, in the harbor and then they were also keeping record of the material that's, uh, that came with the ships. Uh, because it was very practical. You wrote on a, on, a, on, a, on a wax, and then when it's over, you just look, looked at the total number and write it down somewhere else. You erased it, and then you started to write it again. So you could use it many, many times. Now, you could send a letter from one king to the other on a wax writing tablet. He would read it. But of course, in those days, the king did not know how to read and write. Only, this, only the clerks Katip could read and write. So the, the, the clerk wrote the letter of King A to, letter, to, to, to King B. The clerk of King B opened the letter and read it to the king. Then king said, okay, write my answer. He immediately erased it on the, on the wax and then wrote the orders of the new king or the message of the King B, closed it, sealed it, and then sent it to the other king. So you could do it thousands of times. It, it, it's the cheapest and most practical and the quickest way of sending message to each other. It was a big invention. It was invented in Mesopotamia. And the oldest one, can you guess where it was found? The oldest one in the world, dates to 1300 BC. Abi Markelok diyen, söylemedi abi. Thirteen hundred. It was found in a sunken ship in Mediterranean Kash, Kash açıklarında. Thirteen hundred BC. Yeah, thirteen hundred BC. Until then, people thought that the oldest wax writing tablets were used in in in in in Greece. But later on, we found a, a, a stone relief in Zincirli, Antep, and we saw that uh, the, the clerk of the king holds the wax writing tablet under his arm and a pen in his hand. So it dated back to, I think, 700 BC, 700 BC because uh, during Roman Empire, it was about 300 BC. During the time of Alexander the Great, it was 300 BC. But this, this dates back to 700 BC. But then, when the sunken ship, in, they found it in, 18, in 1982, very new, it's not too far, 1982, in the sunken ship, they found a wooden, wood, wooden uh, uh, box, which is coated, of course, they didn't find any wax, it was it's an organic company, it's disagreed, but wood box uh, was found, and it, it, it, it is now the oldest in the world. But I, that, don't forget that we are talking about 1800 BC, and then I mentioned that the la last time it was used in, in Europe was 1842 AD. So it's more than 3000 years it was used, more than 3000 years. It was so practical. In the school, the students use that. In Greece, there are many carvings, many, many drawings that students are using that uh, wax was coated uh, wooden tablets, writing tablets. In Europe, did also in churches they used it. Everywhere they used it. <coughs> it was the most popular uh, writing material in the world. So, uh, in Mesopotamia and Anatolia, we say beeswax was used to make wax writing tablets. Wax writing tablets were small boxes. Just like that one. This is a big one, but the one that's found in, in, in, in, uh, in 
sunken ship in Kash, near uh, south of Ant next to Antalya. So it was as big as this one, just like just in, I'll show you the picture, just like that, nine to twelve centimeters. But of course, the big ones were used, even bigger than this. So roughly, uh, uh, it was preferred because you had it in your hand, 10 to 15 centimeters, but in some cases, uh, you, you could use this one. But in many cases, you do not have only two plates because you could write here, put wax here, then uh, melt it, and when it dries, you can write on it, and then you can erase it, write it again and again. So it's shaped like this because when you close it, the wax is protected. But in some cases, they had thinner ones and maybe five, six, seven uh, wooden plates at the same time with, with, the, with the different kind of attachment. Sekizon yaprakları var. O zaman telden böyle menteşe yapıyorlar. Sekizon yaprağı ince oluyor. Yani bunun bu kadar kalın olması gerekmiyor. Daha ince her şeyleri. O zaman yedi, sekiz tane sayfası olabilir. Kitap gibi oluyor. As I mentioned, some were found in, in Greece and Europe. They are, they are in the museums. When you go to some museums in Greece and Europe, in Italy, in other countries, in Europe, you can see them. Very similar to this, but uh, they, they date back to 300, 400 BC, not, not, not older than that. So uh, they were thought to be the oldest one. And then when they discovered this uh, carving relief on rock, in Gaziantep, Zincirli, this is the uh, the king, this is the clerk. You see the tablet under his arm, and this is the pen box. The pen looks like this. So it has a tip here, sharp tip, and a flat tip here. This is used to erase. Sometimes you can hit it, erase it, or just sometimes when it's cold, you can uh, erase it. And then with this one, you can write it. But in some cases, they just pressed, just like in cuneiform tablets on clay. But in many cases, they uh, wrote it di directly like a pencil. So pencil box, wax tablet. You see, the size of this one is similar to the one that I, I, we have made the replica of. And this is the King Berrakip. 750 BC. So for many years, this was considered to be the oldest in the world until they, they discovered in, in uh, sunken ship Uluburun. Have you heard the name Uluburun ship? Uluburun? Yeah, Ilçenin adı Uluburun. You can see the, the, the, the uh, replica of portion of the ship in our technology museum. Some of the objects there. <coughs> Buraya koymayı unuttum resmin Uluburun'u. Bizim müzede var. Okay. So in this relief we see that New Hittite king Berrakip and the scribe uh, they were both depicted on the on the on the rock. And uh, the scribe as I mentioned was is holding the uh, the tablet and uh, it goes back around 1800 uh, centuries B BC. So it was older than Europe and, and, and Greece. And the sunken ship, as I mentioned, in, in south of uh, Anatolia, in, uh, just close to uh, Antalya, Kash, everybody knows Kash, just uh, say that they found this uh, ship. And then when they ex nobody was expecting to see anything like this because underwater the wood normally would be destructed, dis destroyed. But it was somehow in, in, a, in, a, in a ceramic container in the bottom. But since it was uh, salt water and, and no air there, no oxygen probably, it just stayed alive. Not totally, but some uh, parts of it lost. Uh, it, uh, uh, this has three uh, hinges. Uh, that one also had three hinges, just smaller than that. The technology is the same, you see. Uh, uh, this is ivory. This is, of course, plastic for us. Originally, it's ivory. And this is ebony uh, uh, wood. <coughs> So this is the original picture of that uh, tablet. Uh, 
uh, when I read an article about this, I didn't know that. Yes, many years ago, I didn't know anything about this. And I, wrote, I read an article mentioning that in, in, in uh, uh, Uluburun ship, uh, this tablet was uh, discovered. And I, I was having a lunch with the director of uh, museums in Turkey, general director of museums. And I mentioned to him, I said, look, I, I, I just read that there is some ki a kind of a wax writing box and found in Uluburun. I said, I suspect that perhaps the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, professor who founded it from, I think he was from Germany or Britain, I, I am afraid that he took it away. He said, he said, I don't think so. He says, because everything we had in Uluburun, a shipwreck we found, we kept it in Turkey as far as I, he didn't know. He didn't know anything about this. He never heard about it. He was the, he's the director of museums in Turkey. And he said, maybe I should call the, uh, the, the director of museum in Bodrum, underwater archaeology museum. And he was also excited. I, sh I showed him the pictures. And then he called him. He said, yes, sir, we have it. We said, do we exhibit? No, he says, it's not in the exhibit because we don't have enough place to put it in the exhibit. It's, it's in the stock room, you see? They found it in eight, uh, 1982, and I spoke to them in 2004 or 2003, and it was not being exhibited. The oldest wax writing tablet is not considered to be an important thing. It was put into the, and then I sent, I, my friend of mine used to live in, in Bodrum, and I said, can you go and take a picture of it? And then he took, but this picture is not his. This is someone else's picture. So he took the picture and we have the picture that's taken by my friend is, is in also in our museum. And then now I just read just yesterday or day before when I was preparing the lecture, I found this picture, somebody took it from the museum. So now I, I am very happy to, to hear that now it is being uh, ex in, in, in, in the exhibit not in the stock room anymore. We are lucky because this is very rare, something very rare, not easy to find. 1300 BC and, and still uh, not damaged totally. It should be normally disintegrated. So these are the uh, uh, uh, hinges. Uh, the wood is partially destroyed and the third one is lost. They couldn't find it in the ship. Somehow it got lost. It's ivory, field ship. So there are there are holes in here, so when you close it, you can just uh, attach it and keep it uh, uh, sealed until it reaches to the uh, receiver. Now this is the copy that we made on the same same size, same shape. Uh, as you can see, there are some lines here. They scratched it so that. The, the, uh, uh, the wax could attach to the wood more strongly. And this, this is, uh, so I, I think we have, should have, there is a string here. When you close it, that string is attached to this hook so that it's sealed. Because if it's open, it can be damaged. <coughs> I think it's nine to 12 centimeters, what was it? No, I didn't write down. It's, I think it's nine to twelve centimeters. But anyway, okay. So this is the end of the lecture because this is the half of the previous lecture. So I had to cut it short so that we can uh, have the other lecture. In. Do you have any questions? <laughs>